Hello everybody, Appalachian Naturalist here for another video in the bugs, obviously. So, I've had this polyphemus moth drying on my um, drying board for uh, about going on 16 months now, so I think it's about time to pull it off. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this moth off the drying board and we're going to stick it in the collection I will show you a little bit more about that in a minute and we're going to get this guy prepped for pinning and I'll show you a little bit about that momentarily so, so there's plenty of good stuff to see here today alright Firstly, before we do anything with this dude, let's work with the moth. So, here's our polyphemus moth, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Uh, let's see. Nope. Here it is. So here is... I almost don't have enough room to work here. My moth collection and butterfly collection. So we've cleared a spot in my moth and butterfly tray Ta -da, for a polyphemus moth here. So what we're going to do is going to open that up without destroying everything. Alrighty. Basically we're going to stick them right there. So before we do this we got to get the moth off the board put the labels on it. Labels are really important because otherwise you're just killing bugs. Label actually um, lets you know what that moth is or what that bug is, where it was found and it, it acts as a historic record. It actually permits you to do science with the dead bugs otherwise it's just a collection of dead bugs. So, I got my little pin block here and we're going to start taking the tape off. This is kind of a weird thing because, oops, as you just found out, I'm sitting behind the tripod of the camera, so I haven't figured out a good way to do this yet. All right, I guess we'll start. I don't know. Hmm, does that look like a good place to start to you guys? Or do you want to start over here this wing? Well, I think we ought to start over here this wing. All right, so we'll just pop these off. So this part is almost like playing a game of operation. Just got to go slow. Take your time. Don't pick the funny bone. Except this doesn't buzz annoyingly if you uh, mess it up. There we go. Get in there. Get in there. Oh boy. Oh boy, it's almost like Christmas, isn't it? Now these these uh, strips, they come in a roll, kind of like this, and you can save them for your next moth, which is what I tend to do because I'm cheap. So we'll stick that aside. We'll use it for another moth or another butterfly, and I'll tell you a little bit more about using that these strips and why when I pin my next butterfly or a moth. All right, so this got to be careful here because this pin is actually going through the wing, and we don't want to damage the wing. There. So what's really cool about butterflies and moths, besides their wings, <laughs> is the color the colors on their wings, and these colors are made out of a bunch of little itty bitty scales that lay on the membrane of the wings kind of like shingles on a roof. These little scales are all kinds of different color. Now I can't tell if you can tell this through the, the view camera view thing here, the little screen sticking out of the side, but I'll, I'll switch to the macro lens here in a little bit and get you guys a close-up. You've got these owl spots here designed to look like an owl's eye. And you've got some pinkish purple through here. I mean, really, really neat 
light tannish browns. They're very, very colorful moths. A lot of moths, I think, have more color than butterflies. Oh boy. Easy does it there. Ooh, look at that. Okay. I get amused easily. Go easy, easy, easy. Don't damage. Ah, okay, cool. And we'll get this off here. Yeah, there we go. Wait. We still got some pins right here. I don't know if you can see that. I put these pins here to help hold that left antennae up to get both antennae about the same on the same plane. So let's see if. Oh boy. These are fragile stuff. Okay, got it. Come on. He's done it. Maybe this side. I guess it's kind of like a game of pickup sticks, isn't it? Alright, here we go. Here we go. No, oh, don't damage it. Okay, got it. Whew. Alright. Yay. So there's our polyphemus moth. Let's get these out of the way. Goodbye. And here are our labels. I have a name label here. And a, uh, on one side is the exact location where I found it, and the other side was the collection number and the date corresponding to a uh, data entry in my field guide, which has all whoops, which has all kinds of uh, environmental weather conditions and what the time I found it, where what it was doing when I found it, and all kinds of stuff like that. So that's the scientific part of this whole thing. The collection is well. I compare it to collection ac collecting action figures because I don't know why. All right, so next, we want to make sure these uh, labels are nice and neat on the bug. So I have this tier step thing here. Basically, it's a spacer. There it goes. What we're going to do is put the pin. There's always one pin through the bug through the hole here, and then this will be the distance from the bottom of the drawer. To the bottom of the bug and then this will be the distance from the bottom of the drawer to the first label and then the bottom of the drawer to the second label so that way you have pretty much uniform universal look not necessary but it does kind of look nice so let's go ahead and put the collection stuff down here and I like the name so I can pick it up and quickly read it all right so let's see here Oh man, let's get ready for this. All right, this is some tough stuff here. Ready? <laughs> careful, careful, careful. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Look at that! Isn't that a beautiful moth? Mm, let's see, can you see those colors now? Yeah, kind of. All right, so what's neat is you can actually see where it looks clear in the middle of the, the uh, yellow circle. Well, that's actually a membrane through there. All right, so what we're going to do, slide the bug on the pinning board just like this. All right, now this is a male, and you can tell because of the tremendously large antennae, I'm going to put very light pressure on... Great, I just broke a leg off. Well, that's okay. We can fix that. So we're going to do something a little different. We're going to use a pair of tweezers. And the pin is kind of stuck around the body, so we're going to light pressure here. Very light pressure. Please don't break. Okay. Okay. And there goes the leg. Wonderful. Give me a second. And there goes the other leg. That's just wonderful. So, let this be a lesson. You don't want to let the moth dry for too long because whatever's on the inside gets stuck to that pin, and that's exactly what's happened here. Ugh. Okay, so we're losing legs at this point, so that's wonderful. Don't worry, we can fix that, and I'll show you how. I thought it was going to be a quick video, man. Uh, 
There goes the other leg. Okay, so we've broken a lot of legs off, which is unfortunate, but it happens. Let me pick that one up off the floor. Give me a second. There we go. That's all right, because we will. That's not it. Down there somewhere. Oh, there it is. Oh, there we go. Okay. No big deal, because we have this insect adhesive. And I'll show you how to glue those limbs back on. It'll look like they've never fallen off in the first place. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do something slightly different then. We're going to put both the tags on the same tier then. And we're going to put them on the lowest tier. Just like that. We're going to do one at a time though. I want the name upwards. And we will take the bug and pretty much center it. Sometimes it's a little difficult to find the thing. Alright, give me one second. There we go. There's one. Let's grab the second one. And they're just not going to be nicely centered, but that's okay. Whatever. We will we will curate this later and it'll be better. So there we go. Okay. Ideally, those two labels would have been at different heights, but I can't slide the body further up on the pin because it was just drying too long. Oh well, at least the antennae are still intact. See those? Uh -huh. Can you see those? Yeah, those are the fragile things. If those break off, forget You're never going to get those glued back on. So, uh, well, tell you what. We're going to do a second video, gluing the legs back on because I want to continue with the topic of this video. So we're going to go ahead and stick Polyphemus in our new collection. And we're going to stick the legs right next to it. And I will be back with another video on uh, fixing the Polythemus. Alright. Now, oh, jeez. I need a better setup and I can't figure out how to do that. Okay. Ta-da! Doesn't that look great, guys? Oh, there. Get some light in there. Alright, well, minus the legs, but we'll, we'll fix that in a minute. Alright. Or another video, I mean. Alrighty, so, let's move on with our next project. This I'm only going to let dry for uh, a few days. And nothing like 16 months. The reason I let that one dry so long is because I really, really, really wanted one of those in my collection. And I wanted to make sure that it was done right. <laughs> and I kind of over overcompensated and overkilled it. So, we now have, we don't need any of that data I wrote down. Throw it away. Alright, so, here's the pinning board. We'll get to that momentarily. Here's our next bug. Now, you don't have to be super high tech with, uh... <laughs> your collection methods. So here is one of my collection methods because it's what I had. We'll pull this off here. Now, you might have gotten bugs like this in the past if you're a collector that's been dead for a while and is dehydrated. It's kind of mummified, right? So this is a longhorn beetle of some species. I haven't even looked it up yet. We're going to do a thing, and we're going to key it out together. More than a bit, maybe. So, our, the first thing we need to do is to rehydrate it. And here's how. I rummaged around through Mom's Tupperware drawer here, and I got some stuff here. So, all you need is a... What was that? 
Oh, that was the turtle jumping off his thing. Jeez, that scared me. All right, you need a container and then a lid that is small enough that it can float inside the container. And then you need a second lid, just like this. What we're going to do is we're going to put some water in here. Now I'll be right back. Should have got a cup of water. Luckily, the bathroom is only 12 feet away. All right, so there's our water. Cool. Now we're going to put a little bit of uh, isopropanol alcohol in there. And what the alcohol does is it prevents bacteria from growing. So what causes rotting? Bacteria. And since we're... I'm going to tell you what, let's just kill that bottle. Done. I'm out of alcohol. Bummer. Alright, so. Because we are um, exposing the beetle to a moist environment, bacteria, it's a good place for bacteria to grow. So, we are going to, we put the alcohol in there specifically to impede that bacterial growth. So, what we're going to do is we're going to pick up the little beetle. Come here, dude. Not by the antlers because they're fragile. We're going to stick them in there, and then we're going to snap the lid on. This creates a enclosed environment around the bug. And the bug is drier than this environment, so moisture will go into the bug. After a couple of days in here, that bug will be as pliable as if it were brand new. And then you could easily manipulate and pin it. And of course, always make sure... Your trash is thrown away and your label goes with your bug. See that? Label with bug. Alright, now, beyond that, let me show you some stuff coming down the pipeline. If there is more interest in these videos. Oh, come on. Hold on. Stupid jars. Okay, so, we got some pretty cool beetles in here. Let me just show you a few. So this, I was really excited about this monstrosity. I can't wait. Whoop. Come on. Why am I using those ones? Let me use something I can actually pick them up with. Huh, another the same thing. Look at that. Where'd my other tweezers go? Okay, well, we will make these tweezers work. It's dumb. So every now and then you have tweezers that are just uh, nonsense. All right, here we go. So we've got a pretty cool Hymenoptera in there. I think a sawfly. But we have another one of these stag beetle guys we're going to pin. It was always fun. And this is one of my favorites. I got this down state. This is Eastern Hercules beetle. And unfortunately, its colors have totally faded away. I'm not even sure if you can see what's left of its spots. That used to be uh, kind of Dalmatian colored. But, you know, it's dead. The ethanol and whatnot. And it kind of uh, made the colors fade. But I can't wait to pin this guy. Um, one of the biggest beetles in, in the country, actually. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get a number three pin through that Elytra. But uh, we'll see. I might have to order a number... Number four pin. So. Let's see. Well, the pattern's kind of visible now that the ethanol's evaporating off the. Uh... I don't know if you guys can see that at all. Probably not. But anyway, so that's some of the stuff coming down the pipeline. We're going to pin some of these guys and whatnot. I want to get that one hydrated and uh, pinned before I work on these guys. And yes, I have collect collection numbers and data for that too. It's written down on my bulletin board. That's the only Hercules beetle I have, so I'm not going to get that confused with any other specimen. Alrighty, so this has been fun. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you a quick tour of 
some of the beetles in my collection here. Get you an idea of what's going on in the next thing. And I'm going to do a quick tour of my moth. So give me a second. I got to move everything out of the way and switch lenses. Really should do like elevator music or something for this part. I don't know. Should I add elevator music in my videos? Or, uh, or not? Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you want to hear some elevator music during things like that. Alright, so here's some of my beetles. Hmm. Best beetle. Those are fun. That one got a little goofed up. Quick beetle. Yeah. We'll talk about that guy later. Soldier beetle. <laughs> Weevil. Aquatic beetles. Yeah, all kinds of good stuff here. There's my big stag beetle. So, that's some of my beetles. The rest haven't been curated yet, and they're still kind of in this huge collection. But here's some of my some of my moths. And butterflies. That one got destroyed, unfortunately. So, something got in there and ate it. I was really happy when I got that one, but it had a broken wing. It didn't pin very well. This guy's cool. You wouldn't think they'd be a moth at first glance. Alrighty, so here we go. Let me get you some some nice close ups of this guy. Yeah, neat. Look at that antenna. That's amazing. Really good at smelling stuff. Alright, so there you go. Hopefully this was a short video. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. I wasn't keeping track of time. So, we'll rock and roll the bug thing for a little bit. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that usual YouTube stuff. Until next time, uh, go get yourself some bugs to pin.